Hi, this is Pastor Tim. Welcome to this week's study guide. As we continue our journey through the Minor Prophets, we have been in a series of major lessons from the Minor Prophets. We are now in Zephaniah. Zephaniah is a, well, let's just say it this way. It's kind of a scary book because we see that God is going to pour out His righteous anger upon those who are unrighteous. He is certainly patient, but the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy that though He's patient, he will surely not overlook the sins. And so there's a time coming when all this is going to be tallied up and the account's got to be paid. As we look at Zephaniah, that is the overarching theme that's going on here. But in the midst of all this, we see the grace of God being offered. So Zephaniah is crying out to the people of Judah to repent. He's begging for revival. Wow. <laughs> I... I've been fascinating as I've gone through these books how they so much apply to where I think we are in our nation today. And if there is ever a need for revival, I think that we are in one of those times. And so Zephaniah speaks to me, and I hope it speaks to you. And so we begin today in Zephaniah chapter 1. Zephaniah is talking to his people, God's people, a people that would have on their money like we do, one nation under God, and he's He's given them some serious warnings about what's going to come because of their unrighteousness. He lives around the same time as Josiah, before Josiah's reforms come, and it is a bad time. There has been, there's been all kinds of uh, idolatry, all kinds of immoral practice, including in God's holy land, child sacrifice. And so that brings me to the question, as a nation under God, as a people who have called upon God, as a Christian nation, do you think it's possible that God would be warning us today of coming judgment? Let me just rephrase it this way. If you were God, what would you see right now in your nation that you could tolerate no longer and that you would have to correct? Go ahead and spend some time on that question. So we see again in chapter 1 a warning to Jerusalem and to Judea, that southern nation, that righteous people of God that are acting unrighteously. We see that God said, you got to straighten up because I can't tolerate this any longer. You and I have an innate sense of judge justice. We want to see things set right. If somebody, if somebody, God forbid, raped your child, you would want to see justice done. You would insist on that, and you should. And God is a just God, and He will not let unrighteousness stand even amongst His people. And so today, as a Christian nation, we need to be crying out for revival. And revival always begins with us. Let's go on to the second chapter. And we see here, in chapter 2, verse 4 and on, we see that God's judgment is not just going to come upon His people, but it's going to come on the nations that are surrounding Judah. And so you can look at them and you can see that Judah is unrighteous, but these nations are even more unrighteous. Today, if you look up in Canada, uh, there are far fewer amount of people who are following God there percentage-wise than there are here. You could go down into South America or Mexico and you could see all kinds of unrighteousness that's, uh, that's manifesting itself in those nations. And you can look at a post-Christian Europe and you can look around the world and certainly see where they are not Christ-like at all. Don't miss this. God's going to judge them. Today, ask yourselves this question. Why do these nations deserve the judgment of God? Why does China deserve it? Why does North Korea? Why does Russia? But also, why does Canada and Mexico? Spend a little time on that. So we see then that God doesn't just correct his people. He corrects all those who make themselves enemies of his people. We saw that last week in Habakkuk. We see that God is going to use Babylon to bring judgment upon Judah, but then he's going to utterly destroy Babylon. And so God can use unrighteous people and nations to correct his people. We don't want to be in that boat. We certainly want revival. And also, the cry goes out to these nations, and we see the gospel going forth, even in the Old Testament, to these nations 
that the Gentiles can be saved. As a matter of fact, in chapter 3, we see that there's a call that goes out where the Gentiles can be saved. That is, we're to be spreading the gospel to the uttermost parts of the world. We don't hold it to ourselves. We're going to say we're a Christian nation and all other nations be damned. No, that's not what we do. We are to go into all the world and spread the gospel. As a matter of fact, we see that Jesus Christ is not the king of the Jews. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And so it is his will that all men should be saved. And so here's the beautiful thing. Though we see judgment coming, in chapter 3, we see the grace of God abounding. Though correction will come, God will restore his people. Now this is extremely important because we are not hopeless. Even if God decides to judge this nation, the faithful remnant, those who remain faithful to God, will be restored, either in this life or the next. And so pause and ask yourself the following question. How much comfort do you find knowing that God's going to make everything right? And if you're on his side, it's going to be okay. And so we see in verse 9, we see the conversion of Gentiles. In verses 10 through 15 of chapter 3, we see the restoring of God's people, God's nation. And then in the end, we see in, chapter, in verse 16 through 20 of chapter 3, we see the restoration of a new Jerusalem. This is the same picture that we have. You see, here is Zephaniah referring to what's called the day of the Lord. The, the end days, the days of calamity and destruction, but always in Scripture, we are promised that those who remain faithful to God will see and be a part of that holy city, New Jerusalem. And so Zephaniah has given in us a restoration of Jerusalem to come after the Babylonians, which we see happen, by the way. We see God's people go back to Jerusalem. When Jesus was born, Jerusalem was a major city. But in the end of times, just like the Jerusalem that was destroyed in the, at, at the fall of, to the Babylonians, we see that that Jerusalem was destroyed. In the end, we will see, just as that one was restored, we'll see that God will create a holy city for his people to be in forever. Find comfort in that, friends, and make sure that you stay true and faithful to the God who's true and faithful to you. He gives us hope, even in times of warnings of calamity. And if we will but trust in him, he will bring it all to a good end for us. And so we pray for revival. Pray for revival in our church, in our community, certainly in our city, in our nation, and around the world. Because Zephaniah promises us that good things will come to those who follow God. Thanks for joining me today on this study guide. God bless.